Finding a dead or stuck pixel on your monitor is really annoying, especially if you just spent really good money on a brand new one. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what the different types of pixel defects are, like hot pixel, stuck pixel, dead pixel, what the differences are, and also the differences between different types of LCD technology, because a dead pixel on a TN panel is not the same as a dead pixel on an IPS panel. It's kind of like the opposite cause. So it's good to know what's going on at the pixel level. And also, of course, I'm gonna show you a couple ways you can possibly fix dead and stuck pixels and I'm also going to show you what not to do and what could go wrong I kind of sacrificed potentially part of my monitor to show you what will happen if you do it the wrong way so first let's go over the main types of pixel defects specifically these are dead pixels hot pixels and stuck pixels so first of all a dead pixel pretty easy to understand it's just a pixel that is dead it shows no light no matter what it's supposed to if it's red green blue it's just black now, it could also be a dead subpixel, which means that only the red, green, or blue part of the pixel doesn't work. So if it's supposed to show green, it might show green, but only when it's supposed to show blue on the screen, it's then dark. The next type is a hot pixel, which is the exact opposite. It's all white. So all three red, green, blue subpixels are always on. So at a distance, it looks like it's just a white pixel, no matter what it's supposed to. And the third type is a stuck pixel, which is where one or possibly two of the subpixels, red, green, blue, is always stuck on. So even if the monitor is supposed to be showing black, it's gonna still have the green, blue, or red always on, so it's gonna be shining that color pixel always. And in my monitor, you can see that I do have a stuck green pixel, which I'm gonna use for the demonstration, and we're gonna see if we can fix it or improve it. All right, next up, let's talk about how LCD panels work, basically at the pixel level, so you'll understand what's going on and what causes a dead pixel, because it's gonna be different on a TN panel or IPS, and you'll see why it's relevant. So first we can go over TN panels, which are probably more common in more affordable monitors, but you probably already know if you have an IPS or not. We'll go over IPS next. So basically with an LCD monitor on the far back of the panel, you're going to have an LED backlight that just shines uniform white light through the entire panel. And then for each pixel is divided into three sub pixels with filters that convert the light into either red, green, or blue. So the color can be displayed however the computer wants. But if we just left it at this, then all the colors would be showing at the same time. It would still just look white. So we have to have some way to control which pixels and sub pixels are on at any given time and at what brightness. So how does the monitor do that? Well, actually, unlike OLED panels, where each individual sub pixel emits its own light through an LED, diode of that color, LCDs on the other hand actually block the other colors of the subpixels, allowing through only the subpixel it wants. So it basically blocks anything from the white backlight that it doesn't, only allowing through the color it wants. And they actually do this with what are called polarizing filters, which can be either glass or a film or something. And you know how light is a wave, it can actually be oriented in different ways. And a polarizing filter will actually only allow light waves that are oriented in a certain orientation. So kind of like how the light wave is tilted you can sort of think of it like. And then at least in TN panels, there is a second polarizing filter right in front of each subpixel, which is oriented 90 degrees in relation to the first polarizing filter. So basically, if you just had it like this, it would block all light because the one polarizing filter only lets through light in one direction, and then the other polarizing filter only allows light in a opposite direction, so it's not gonna let any of the first light through. And that's actually where these liquid crystals come into play. They go between both the polarizing filters and they allow the monitor to control, depending on some voltage and some other stuff, I'll explain in a second, how the light is oriented so it can convert light that's not going in the right direction to in the right direction, allowing only certain parts through. So in each pixel and actually each sub pixel, there are liquid crystals which can polarize the light based on the voltage applied. With no voltage, so the default state, the liquid crystals naturally twist the light 90 degrees. So it's going to just pass by default if there's no voltage applied to that pixel. However, when a voltage to that pixel is applied, the crystals actually kind of straighten out, therefore keeping the light from the first polarizer going in the same direction, and therefore it will be blocked by the second polarizer. So by adjusting how much voltage is applied to each pixel and subpixel, you're basically controlling how much out of sync the light is going to be and twisted from the second polarizer, therefore determining how much actually is going to be blocked. And actually here's a real life demo using some photography polarizing filters. Same idea, you can imagine this one being the first polarizing filter in the monitor and this one the second one. You can see 
Just normally, if I put these polarizing filters together, you can still see my mouth and face through it because this one is allowing light through and it's the same orientation that's allowing through this one. However, if I start to twist this, it blocks out light. And it, if I can get it directly at 90 degrees, you can't actually see through this at all. So it's the same exact idea how it works on the monitor, except this is just kind of scaled up. And this is also why sometimes if you're wearing polarized sunglasses and you look at a phone or an LC monitor and you tilt it, sometimes it completely blacks out the screen because it's kind of going out of sync, you can think of, from the second polarizer that's letting light through that monitor. But anyway, one main takeaway to remember is that for TN panels, the default you can think of of a pixel is to be on and then you have to actively add voltage to turn that pixel off and that's how it controls color. Now with IPS type LCD panels, it's different. It's actually kind of the exact opposite. Instead of the second polarizing filter being at 90 degrees out of sync with the first polarizing filter, it's actually oriented the same way as the first one. Now remember that the liquid crystals still do bending by default when no voltage is applied. This means that by default, if no voltage is applied to a pixel, it's not going to be showing through the second polarizing filter because by default, it'll be out of sync. And that is until voltage is applied to the crystal, straightening it out, which will then be allowed through that second polarizing filter. So unlike a TN panel, an IPS panel by default will block any light that's coming through it until a voltage is applied, therefore allowing it through. So that's how LCDs work, but why is that all relevant to when we're supposed to be talking about dead pixels? Well, it's important to understand because you now probably see how a dead pixel on a TN panel is a different cause from a dead pixel on an IPS panel, probably the exact opposite cause. A dead pixel on an IPS panel means that no voltage is being applied to that pixel, it's just kind of dead. Whereas on a TN panel, a dead pixel actually means that it's constantly being applied a voltage when it's not supposed to. And similar idea for stuck pixels on an IPS monitor, it means it's stuck in the active voltage supplied mode. Whereas on a TN panel, it means that it's truly dead. It's not doing anything, not getting any voltage or that voltage that is being applied isn't doing anything. This is important because in my opinion, this therefore means that you should probably have logically a better chance of fixing a pixel that is stuck in the active mode. And again, by this, I mean a dead pixel on a TN panel or a stuck pixel on an IPS panel. I don't actually have any data to back this up, but I'm just thinking logically, it seems like you're more likely to be able to fix something that you know works, it's just not turning off than something that won't turn on at all. So that's why I think it's important to understand which type of panel you have, because it can maybe give you an idea of how much to expect from trying to fix it. So let's take another look at the pixel on my monitor, which is stuck, and it is an IPS panel. So I took my super duper macro zoom lens, and you can actually at this point see the individual structure and subpixels of each pixel. And very strangely, you may notice that it seems like only part of the green subpixel appears stuck not as big as a full green subpixel. And when I move the mouse over, the rest of the subpixel actually does light up along with the other colors, of course. So the other subpixels in that pixel are fine, but the green one is kind of messed up. I didn't even know it was possible for part of a subpixel to be stuck. So I guess at least it's fortunate that it is not gonna be as bright of a stuck pixel as if the whole subpixel was lit up. But unfortunately, it is still smack dab in the middle of my monitor. So the fact that I know it's there is kind of annoying. Now, if you have some stuck pixels on your monitor, you may be able to return it to the manufacturer, but only depending on how many there are. It's really annoying, but manufacturers actually consider a certain number of dead and stuck pixels as normal for any panel. And different manufacturers are going to have different amounts that they allow and for different types and location. So for example, if you have one dead pixel in the far corner, they're probably not gonna replace it. If you have a couple stuck pixels or bright pixels right in the middle of the screen, then you're probably more likely to get them to replace it. That being said though, there is actually a manufacturing standard that does define how many pixels are acceptable for different so-called classes of monitors. This standard is called ISO 13406-2. And there are four classes, classes one, two, three, and four, which define the acceptable levels of dead, stuck, or defective pixels per million pixels on a monitor display. If a monitor is advertised as a class one monitor, then it means there are going to be no defects at all on the entire monitor, no dead, stuck, or hot pixels at all. If it's a class two monitor, which I do believe most consumer monitors are, that's going to allow up to two hot or dead pixels 
up to five stuck pixels or up to two clusters of stuck pixels. And then class three and four allow even larger numbers of defects. It's important to realize that these classes are not a law, they're manufacturing guidelines. A monitor manufacturer can choose to follow any of these if they advertise the monitor as that. But again, some monitor brands may actually have their own guidelines that they advertise and it might be better or worse than class two. Now again, from what I've read, most monitors for consumers are probably gonna be class two, but it's also important to remember that those numbers of pixels that are acceptable that I read off are per million pixels. For a 1080p monitor, that's about two million pixels, so you gotta multiply all those numbers we went over by two. For 1440p, that's about 3.6 million, and for 4K, that's eight million pixels. But also remember that the higher the resolution of the monitor, the smaller each pixel is probably going to be, so therefore, each one is going to be less noticeable. Unfortunately, you're probably not able to go out and find any class one monitors, at least consumer grade. There might be some that are professional grade for like movie editing, color grading, that sort of thing that are advertised as class one if you need the absolute best quality, no defects, obviously, for something that professional. But again, those are gonna be more expensive because of that, because they can't sell any monitors that have any defects at all. So they basically have to make up the difference for the ones that they kind of have to maybe throw away or not use in the ones that they do sell. All right, so now let's get to the meat of the video, how to actually potentially fix dead, stuck, hot pixels, whatever. And it is important for me to point out that these are not guaranteed methods in any way. If it's a physical broken defect on that monitor pixel, then it's possible that nothing you can possibly do will fix it, you're just out of luck, but there are a few things you can try. One thing you can do is just wait, wait and see. It's possible that the pixel will fix itself. For my monitor, that green pixel was definitely brighter, I remember, when I first got it, and it definitely has dimmed over time. So it has slightly improved, though not fixed completely. The next thing to try though, which is definitely the easiest and safest method, is a website called JScreen Fix. And what's nice about this is it is free, there's nothing to install, it's just right on the website, and it is very low risk. What it does is it'll bring up a box of rapidly alternating pixels going on and off of different colors, and you just drag that box over the pixel in question. And the idea is by rapidly changing the voltage of that pixel and the pixels around it, you can potentially knock that pixel into working order. And then you just let it sit there for as long as you're willing to wait, basically. I would probably say around 20 minutes at least. Again, it's not guaranteed, but it is the lowest risk. You're not gonna damage your monitor in any way by letting this run for several hours. Do keep in mind though, if you're gonna be doing this on a OLED TV or OLED monitor, then leaving the same thing on the screen could potentially cause a little bit of ghosting or burn in. So maybe don't leave it on an OLED monitor for 24 hours, but on an LCD monitor, you're not gonna have a problem. So what I would try is maybe leave it on for 20 minutes, check to see if it worked. If it didn't, maybe let it go for several hours, maybe even overnight or so, and then come back and check However, if after that long, it still hasn't fixed the problem, it's probably not gonna be able to fix it at all. So if JScreenFix doesn't fix the problem, then the last thing you can try is to physically massage the pixel, but it's important that you do this very carefully and do it right, so pay attention. What you can do is take a microfiber cloth, one that's definitely not gonna scratch the monitor, and then gently press through it with your finger or potentially even your fingernail. Or if you have a pencil eraser, that would be really good because it's kind of soft. Again, through the microfiber cloth, just kind of massage it right on the pixel. If you use something that's too hard, then you risk scratching the monitor, like a bare fingernail or a pen or something like that. Not a good idea. And if you press too hard with whatever you use, even something soft like an eraser, then you're going to risk either creating more dead pixels or damaging the monitor if you press really hard on it. So definitely be gentle with it. I actually found that my iPad's Apple Pencil worked perfectly. The tip was made of this really soft plastic or rubber that didn't scratch at all, and it would allow me to basically concentrate the force because it was such a small tip right on the pixel as much as possible. So basically, I just kind of gently rubbed on the pixel, trying to reduce the amount of pressure on any of the surrounding pixels. And what you might also try to do is maybe using J Screen Fix at the same time as you're rubbing it gently. That might help more. You can also try lightly tapping on that pixel with the same thing instead of rubbing on it. Now, you don't want to do this too long. I don't know the exact number, but I would probably guess maybe 10 to 20 seconds max 
of rubbing is what you wanna try. Any more than that, it's probably unlikely to do anything, and then you're gonna risk damaging the monitor even if you're not pressing very hard. But again, this is not a guaranteed method. That's why you don't wanna press too hard or keep rubbing if it doesn't work. Now, after doing this, I did find that I think the pixel was a little bit dimmer than it was before, so it definitely was an improvement, but it was still there for me, unfortunately. So next, let's go over what you definitely should not do and what could potentially happen if you do it anyway. So basically, I was starting to get kind of frustrated that it wasn't working. I thought, oh, maybe if I just press harder or do it longer, then it'll work. So I decided, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna go YOLO on this, and if anything, it'll just make a good demonstration on what not to do. So I started pressing pretty darn hard when I was rubbing on it with the monitor with the Apple Pen Pencil, and it was definitely harder than I knew I should. Then I tried another method I saw where someone actually used a hair dryer while pressing on it to add some heat. So I tried that. I put it on the warm setting, not the hot setting, and I was rubbing it there, and that still did not work. So I would say using a hair dryer, probably not worth the risk. In my case, it really didn't do anything, even pressing hard, using a hair dryer wasn't able to do it. So I would not recommend using a hairdryer. Then I thought, all right, well, maybe a hairdryer didn't work. Maybe cold will work. So I literally got like an ice pack out of the freezer, held it up to the thing, and then was rubbing on it. And no, that didn't work either. And finally, since it still was stuck, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I am just really gonna press on this freaking thing. So I was pressing extremely hard. Literally, I thought it was potentially going to break the monitor. It wasn't as hard as I absolutely could have pressed, like if I was trying to break the monitor, but I'm talking, it was like Rocky IV, if it breaks, it breaks level of pressure. And this monitor is a matte screen, it's not glass. So I was actually kind of surprised that it didn't break with all honesty, but at the end of all of that, Nope, it still did not fix that stuck pixel. And here's the reason why you do not wanna do what I just showed you in pressing super hard. You can now see that after all that, there is actually a dark spot surrounding that pixel that I was pressing on. I'm not sure if it's gonna show up super well on video, but it is there and it is very noticeable. I waited to see if it would go away, so it has been about a week since I did this, and it has reduced the severity of that dark spot, probably about 50%, but it is still there and it's more noticeable than that stuck pixel ever was. So definitely not worth it to press super hard if gently pressing on it for a little while doesn't help. Now, from what I've read, it is possible and maybe even likely to get a temporary dark spot no matter how gently you rub or maybe if you do rub slightly too hard. But from what I've read, it should not be permanent. However, in my case, because I was pressing so freaking hard, I'm thinking it could possibly be permanent. I'm hoping it will improve slowly, maybe to the point of not being noticeable at least. So what I'll do is if you're watching this months down the line, I will update in the description and put how long it's been and whether it's ever improved or not so you can kind of get an idea. Maybe if six months down the line, it's finally gone, then you'll know, all right, well, if I press too hard, maybe I don't wanna have a dark spot for six months. So by now, you should at least be able to tackle any defective pixels on your screen. And while these are not guaranteed methods, then you can at least hope to potentially improve it or fix some of them if you have multiple. If you have several defective pixels that are clustered near the middle of the screen, it probably is worth it to go and try and get a replacement from the manufacturer. But if you have just a couple that are in the corner that you don't even notice, then it's up to you whether you wanna do a roulette and risk getting a replacement that may also have more dead pixels and it might be better just try and fix it or just live with the ones that are not noticeable. And remember, no matter what you do, just don't press too hard, don't press any more than you absolutely have to because depending on the type of monitor you have, you could potentially just shatter it, break it, or get a dark spot, which is probably the best case scenario. But at least now you know what you can try. So if you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I go over what happened to the A and B drive in Windows. Why do you never see them? It's pretty fun, so you can watch that by just clicking on it right there. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.